Hello, welcome to Rational Investing. My name is Cameron Stewart, CFA, and today we're going to look at Zoom. Zoom communications have been in the news recently because the stock price has gone almost parabolic. As people scramble to work from home, they're signing up and registering for services uh, that allow communication remotely, which is a fantastic product. I've used it, used it countless times. But being a solid product and being a good investment might not be the same thing. Let's take a look at Zoom and see uh, what we can find from it and where we think the value might be. This is their most recent 10K. If you read it, you'll learn that they recently went public. And there's very little historical information that we can truly base ourselves on. Now remember, what this channel is about is long-term investing. We want to take a 10-year horizon and figure out what do we think this company's going to be worth in 10 years. And in doing so, we look at the prior 10 years to figure out what has it done historically and how can we use that as a guideline for going forward. Uh, that's the rational investing component. And what do we use as a guideline uh, for determining investment? We look for top-line revenue growth. We look, like, we look for positive free cash flow. We look for growing earnings and growing cash flow. We look for no debt or low debt. And we look for a, a solid or, or a well-priced security that we can get into. So let's dive in. Uh, I've looked through the 10K already and pulled what I can for you. Uh, you can see it here. Uh, as you'll notice, there's very little information I can get historically because the company itself is fairly new. And that's not a knock against Zoom as a company, their employees, or the service. I think it's fantastic. I use it myself. But here, we're trying, to, we're trying to invest money to make more money. So the idea here is not, is the product good? The idea is, is the investment good? That's what we're looking for. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the cash flow from operation. We're going to look at CapEx, debt, free cash flow, and shares, and figure out what's going on here. Free cash flow is very strong. Now, these numbers are in thousands, and their fiscal year is January 31st. These numbers are very strong. Look at this growth. 19, this would be million dollars in operating cash flow. Up to 51, that's a, that's a 4, uh, 2x, sorry, 2.5x. Mental math is difficult right now. Uh, and then it does, it does 3x to $150 million of, of operating cash flow. Outstanding. Uh, CapEx ratio relative to operating cash flow is low. It's fantastic. $38 billion was reinvested in the company for a free cash flow of $113 million. Shares outstanding. Wait a second. Those are pretty large. Okay. Two hundred and 78 million shares outstanding means a 41 cent uh, per share um, free cash flow recently traded 30 uh, not recently excuse, excuse me uh, at the end the average of January of 2020 uh, the shares were trading at um, 73 dollars a share what I want to point out here is that this is a this is a startup VC backed uh, company and they IPO'd it Great, good for them. They have a fantastic uh, a, a market valuation at $73 a share. But what's important to note is that the early investors they got in and how they got in. Um, in particular, one uh, security or investment that they bought was a convertible uh, bond, a convertible note. And that conversion converts into stock. And you can see it here, I've assumed conversion. So they had basically 78 million shares outstanding the debt is converted into equity right before IPO, and the company has to issue shares to do that. So they issued a tremendous amount of shares, upward of 150 million shares to this particular investment fund that owns those shares. Why do I mention that? This happens all the time, and there's nothing wrong with it. But if you're, a secu if you're an investment holder, you've got to figure out when did that guy or girl or fund get into the investment? Well, I've estimated about $4.50 was the entrance value, or roughly a billion dollars of enterprise value is what they bought in at. Well, what is it trading for now? $73. That is a tremendous gain that they got. And if you're an investor now, getting in at this price, and these guys or girls, the fund, decides to exit, you're going to be steamrolled. As they hit the sell button and all these shares liquidate in the market, that stock price is going to come down, and you're going to be you're going to you're going to have to ride that out, and you want to make sure that you're willing to do that. 
And that's a big risk here. You need to be mindful of that before you go diving into the stock. All right. So this is the, this is the performance. I can't get anything here, so I don't know. That's why you've got errors here, because I can't figure out what it is. And as a result, I can't estimate yield or growth. I've got too little information, and the, the, the severity is all over the place. But what it will do, for the sake of um, uh, just, just this example, is we're going to walk through what this could look like if you just made some assumptions up to come up with a price. Because at the end of the day, that's what the market's doing. They don't have historical numbers to go for. They're basically saying, what is the AUM, or addressable market, that, uh, that's outstanding that they could possibly go after? And if they get some percentage of that, what is that percentage worth to the company? That's how they value something like this. It's not on a free cash flow basis. But because that's what we do here, we're going to take our model and apply it to their investment. So here's the value. 2021, I'm taking their earnings free cash flow and I'm growing it. I'm just guessing it 100%. This is pure guess. Uh, and I'm just giving them high numbers to try to come up with a future value because this is a growth stock. But I have no basis for these numbers and it's really just a math exercise at this point. But if you do that, you get $256 uh, estimated share price in 2030. Okay, so that's 10 years from now, the estimated price. Let's go look at EBITDA and do it that do that method. Uh, also, there's a, a loan to employees for 1.6 million on the books. I didn't know what that was. I couldn't find it in the 10K. Um, I'd like a little bit more disclosure around how and how they lend money to employees. But let's look at EBITDA revenue. Revenue is one of our hallmarks. We want to see revenue growth, and we get it. 60 million dollars, 150, 300, 660 beautiful. Even uh, the, the company talks about 2021 continued acceleration and growth, which is fantastic. And from what I can hear, with everybody signing up because they're working from home, they should have a very good number there. But the question is not, not how, how well how popular it is. The question is, is it a good investment? And those things are two different things. So let's walk through. EBIT, depreciation, no one time, uh, and, and EBITDA. I'm not adding back the, uh, the shareholder comp that you get when you IPO. That is an expense. I'm treating it as an expense, and it should be uh, expensed. Here's the EBITDA, $29 uh, million, uh, million dollars. And, uh, sorry, let me get the mouse out of the way. And kudos for them to be, for being profitable. A, a lot of these new tech startups are not profitable, and I commend them for both having uh, no debt and being profitable. So we'll keep going. Uh, let's get the EBITDA. Less cash, they've got a lot of cash on hand because of the IPO. Market cap, whoa. That's a $20 billion valuation. Again, that was end of last year, end of 2019 at $73 a share. It's $20 billion. EV to enterprise value, 680 times. What does that mean? That means that if, if they make $29 million in EBITDA a year, and you buy in right now at the valuation of $20 billion, it would take you 860 years, I'm sorry, 680 years to get your money back. Uh, th this, this market multiple is very important. Uh, you want to see companies in the ideally single digits, but uh, you know, as they get bigger, they get more expensive. But uh, 680 years to get an investment payback is a long time. So what that's telling you is investors are betting on growth. They're betting that this number is not going to stay at $29 uh, million, but will grow and grow extremely rapidly to justify a price like that. So we're going to go forward. I don't have what I need for EBITDA growth. I don't have what I need for a long-term enterprise value. We're going to make some assumptions, but I want to show you what the market's, uh, what the market's thinking. So again, I took the, uh, the EBITDA that we had in 2020, and I'm growing at 100% and then 80%, 60%, just giving it a really, really high growth curve and saying that they're going to be at $730 million of EBITDA in 10 years, which is a tremendous uh, growth rate. Let's just see that they go from, I'm saying that they go from $29 million to Seven hundred, sorry, too far. Seven hundred and thirty million dollars 
uh, in, uh, in 10 years. That's something like 20 times if the, the mental gymnastics work. Uh, so that's, uh, that, that's aggressive to say the least. But we'll give them credit. We'll say, hey, they're, they're a growth stock. Everyone's signing up for it. Let's plug that in. What do I get? Well, at that stage, I'm going to give it an enterprise value multiple of 18 times because, as you can see, growth would be plateauing and, uh, you know, they're already super large. So the multiple is going to come down from the, 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 the super high, what are they? Let me show you. From the 600 or the 75, I'm giving an 18, which is more of a, a mature company uh, market multiple. Shares outstanding. I got this from the, the 301 million shares outstanding from an earnings presentation. But basically, market cap of 13 billion uh, in the future divided by uh, 300 million shares gives you uh, a 40, 43 dollars a share. Uh, so that's that that's a huge difference, a huge range. Let's go over here and take a look at. Uh, what the what the what the range is and what's trading for so you can see the range in a decade from now We think it's 256 versus forty three dollars. That would be the banding range and that's super wide uh, That that there's a lot of dispersion in that those two numbers What's it trading it as of today? It's trading at hundred and thirty five dollars So already it's trading above our ten-year forecast. That's how that's how aggressive um uh, the, the price appreciation the stock has been. So from a rational investor's perspective, we can't quite wrap, wrap our minds around why people are attributing so much value to the stock. Let's do an IRR calculation to give you perspective over, the, over time. So again, uh, following our previous example from free cash flow, I'm just bringing the free cash flow per share here. I get in at $135, the current market price. I get my cash flows. I get out at our average that, that we're assuming 150 bucks, and I get a IRR of 5%. So that means I'm taking on a tremendous amount of risk that this stock could underperform for the yield I could get on a bond or the dividend yield I can get on a high quality blue chip stock. Uh, so for us, the rational investor says, you know what, uh, that juice isn't worth the squeeze, so to speak, uh, and there's too much risk around the volatility, we're gonna pass. Uh, a couple other metrics here, or a, a, a 0.5 cash on cash return. Uh, it's not. It's not really where we want to be. Now, here's the fun exercise we can do. So, from a rational perspective, rational investors' perspective, we're going to pass. But what do we need to do to to take the market price and push it into our forecast so that we can see if the market's rational and the business can support that. What does the business need to be in, 20, in uh, 20, 20, 2030 to justify the current price? So kind of reverse engineering uh, a, 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 a future value, if you will. What we're going to do is we're going we're to look at this number here, and I'm going to take out uh, all of these numbers for right now. And what we're going to do is we're going to say we're going to buy it at $135. We're going to say that that is a rational price just for some fun mental math here for a second. And we're going to say what does the price need to be in uh, 10 years to justify the risk of buying it at $35. So I'm going to start making up numbers here and say is it $1,500? So this is saying if it's $1,500, it goes through my cash flow here, I will get an IRR of 32% over those 10 years. That seems reasonable for a stock that has no history uh, and, uh, and, and, and um, you know, is risky. So the market's saying if I buy it right now and this is fair value, uh, they should get 150, excuse me, $1,500 a share uh, in 10 years. Well, what is that an EBITDA basis? If I take the, the share price a decade from now, and I multiply it times my outstanding shares, right? Now these are in thousands, so that's that's um, that's four hundred and fifty-one billion dollars of uh, of of market of uh, market cap. Now there's no debt, no cash on hand because they distributed it all out. Uh, so 
that's 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 a lot. If if I'm at an 18x uh, multiple, again, that's a enterprise value to EBITDA multiple. It's what we used here to get the value. That means my EBITDA a decade from now needs to be $25 billion a year. Wait, $25 billion a year? What is it doing now? Let's zip over and see. Uh, my computer's a little slow on the lag, but it's doing $29 million right now. It has to go from 20... Ah, oh, here we go. It's doing $29 million uh, last year. And then you're saying that that's, that $29 million is going to grow to $25 billion? Uh, that is... Eight hundred and sixty times in a decade. Now I'm sorry, uh, from a rational perspective, that just doesn't pass the smell test. So I love the company. I use the product. I think it's fantastic. But from an investor perspective, I'm going to take my hard-earned money and I'm going to go buy a stock that I think in the ten years is going to be worth something. Uh, the likelihood that this stock hits this price. Uh, a decade from now with these uh, earnings multiples, in my opinion, is extremely remote. And it's not worth the risk of my hard-earned cash. I would rather go buy a blue chip or some other company that has a little bit more certainty. I might not get the skyrocketing return. Right. I might not get 30-40% IRR. I might not make 10 times my money. Uh, but the money I do put out is going to be safer. And that's what I want. I want return of capital uh, first, and then return on capital second. So thank you for watching Rational Investor. This is a review of Zoom Communications. Again, good company, great people, uh, but at this point I think we're going to hold off and see how it plays out. Thank you very much for your time.